Welcome to yet another episode of Applied Salesforce. Here we shall demonstrate the application of email to case and related concepts, including thread ID and how to embed it in auto response template. And finally, setting up email forwarding using Gmail. To make the concepts clear, I shall demonstrate the actual application using the below scenario. Jira owned a fictitious analytics company wanted to set up email to case to enable customers to log cases via email also all the interactions that ensue over email on the case should also be logged and linked to the case concerned the typical steps setting up auto response templates setting up response rules uh, set up email to case and finally set up email forwarding let's jump over our org the first step is to you know set up auto response template let me edit i already have set it up one of the important concepts here is to understand the idea behind you no know, including case thread id so it is included uh, at uh, the subject level as well as at the body level so how do we do that first so go to uh, navigate to case fields select the case thread id copy the merge field and paste it into the subject line as well as into the body so the importance of this is in case if you wanted to keep the you no know, interactions over a case linked to that particular case you need to use this id we will uh, see that when we generate the auto response after the case is created so now let's jump over to auto response um, rule i have the rule entry um, which states case origin equals email send the template back the template that you no know, send the template to to the uh, person who created the case so the one who sent the email in this context so the uh, the template that is used is the one that we created moments back next is uh, email to case you navigate setup search for email to case in the quick find you locate this page jump onto this page so the basic concept of email to case is you are offering at another channel for your customers to log their cases at another channel for interaction and which you no know, directly you know, leads um, uh, to the customer satisfaction and also a way to delight the customers. So it comes with two flavors. One is email to case and the second one is on demand email to case. So we uh, see on demand email to case in this um, episode. So the difference um, uh, prima facie is the uh, the you no know, the email the email attachments that could be sent using um, on demand email to case is up to 25 MB and uh, email on demand email to case doesn't require to download you know, the agent and install it within your corporate firewall. So with that introduction, let's move on to set this up. Just already created. Um, this uh, setting is already set. So important um, things that to note is insert thread in email subject as well as in the email body. This is an important setting. And uh, apart from that, enable on demand service, and uh, which uh, leads uh, you to the routing addresses. You have to create routing addresses. Um, the routing address, which is you now provided by Salesforce, um, if you use this routing address. If you send an email to this routing address, a case would be created uh, within Salesforce. So let me edit the routing address to give you some perspective of it. Uh, the first is the valid email address where you get the verification code. And this is the cryptic email address that is created by Salesforce. And we have an option to you know, short uh, whitelist the domain uh, from which you can accept the emails. The optional task and uh, some of the attributes of the case that gets created you can set it here one is the ownership either it could be a user or a queue i've selected it as a queue the priority of the case and the case origin are set and you have optionally you have option to you know, uh, set the case record type so the setting is done uh, we move on uh no we i let me copy the cryptic email address and uh, yeah, so let me send an email to this address to verify if it creates a case. Uh, so this is the cryptic email address. I have the uh, ready-made template. Um, I am uh, a customer having trouble with data load, data import problems. 
So he's trying to get help from Jedawood. So uh, he's trying, um, he's sending an email to this cryptic email address. So that is not decided though. Uh, we will be discussing how we can have a nice looking email address um, replacing the cryptic one in the later part of this uh, session. That is the, uh, that is a part when we discuss uh, email forwarding. So let me send this email to see if it indeed creates a case. I send this email. Let me check this queue. I'm just checking all open cases. Yeah, it indeed create this case. The case is created. And um, additionally, I have also, and I've gotten the auto response. I will uh, go through it in a moment. And additionally, it is important to note that I have also added an email related list to the page layout. You could see the original email and the response that is sent back uh, logged. Let me go through the the auto response one, right? So here you could see this um, um, no thread ID uh, in the subject as well as uh, in the body. So it helps maintain the link with the original case that was created. Um, uh, let's say if I am, if the customer is, uh, you know, the uh, uh, it's a little urgent for the customer, so he uh, sends an um, uh, email. <clears throat> he sends an email again to the cryptic email ID. It says pretty urgent. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> it's pretty urgent for him and uh, he sends it so it should not create a new case right so although you are hitting the same cryptic email id it should not create a new case however it should link this conversation with the existing case so uh, let's check if it happens so currently we have two details logged the third email uh, should not create a new case but it did uh, uh no get appended to the existing case so that's uh, that's that's the desired that's that's the you no know, uh, the code um, feature of uh, embedding the thread id okay so now um you know this um, cryptic email is undesired we cannot share this cryptic cryptic email with the customer so we need to find a way where we give nice looking email uh, ID to the customer and uh, no under the hood we use the this cryptic email ID. How do we do it? So let's I have created an uh, you know an um, account in Gmail uh, which is help me jdavod at gmail.com. So uh, let's set up the email forwarding first. So I'm uh, you navigate to settings and uh, uh, I click on forwarding and pop add a forwarding address I paste the cryptic email address click on next i will have to verify this so uh, gmail usually sends a, a code a verification code to uh, this uh, email address so typically if anything that hits this address you know you have a case created so let's assume that um, a case gets created uh, which indeed will have the you know the code that i need to use to activate the setting in gmail yeah, the code is sent. Let me copy the code. The confirmation code is sent. Let me copy it. Go back to Gmail. Paste the confirmation. Click on verify. It got verified. I check this checkbox for forwarding and save this setting. So I have now to test, I will send an email to this uh, email ID. So a new case should be created. The email ID uses help me over gmail.com and I'm pushing in the button send button. Let me check if uh, email lands here and then subsequently it should also create uh, a case in Salesforce. Yeah, so it landed here. Let me check if a case is created. A case is created. I got the response. Yeah, of course, a case is also created. Right. So. So that's it. Um, uh, thanks for uh, watching. This essentially covers uh, multiple things, putting to email to case, uh, the thread ID and how you can forward you know, the uh, email that uh, sits uh, that gets into your inbox into Salesforce and help Salesforce create a case. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.